Okay, hello everyone. So, um, this is a lesson I just taught today, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. This is for junior high school, uh, specifically grade three. So back in Canada, it would be equivalent to grade nine. Um, okay, so this lesson had two parts. Part one was my PowerPoint presentation about New Year's events around the world. And part two was working on um, grammar and specific sentences from the textbook. So, okay, so basically part one, or the first, okay, we'll start from the beginning. So I walk into the classroom, we have our greeting, I ask everyone how they are, and then everyone's good. And then uh, the students sit down, and then I have this on the screen, and I'm like, okay, so I'm going to show you pictures and tell you information about New Year's celebrations around the world. You have to listen and remember, because after the presentation, there will be a listening test, listening quiz. Um, it's very informal. It's not something that they would use on their report cards or anything, but uh, it, it's like a fun quiz game, basically. Okay, so I'd start with this. I'd be like, okay, Happy New Year. It's 2016. Woo! Uh, so I started with my home, what I do, what my family does, what my friends do for um, New Year's. So this one, I wrote down three statements. I have, on December 31st, family and friends get together and they celebrate the New Year. Family and friends have a lot of food and drinks, so they eat and drink together. And the last one is, uh, we play games, watch TV, and talk about the previous year. So sometimes uh, there's games uh, that our, our friends and family would do. They'd be like, okay, what's the, the scariest thing that happened to you in 2015? Uh, or what's the awesomest thing that happened to you? And just like reminiscing through the year. Anyways, so then I'd say, okay, at midnight, everyone counts down from 10 to 1. So 10, 9, 8, the little, little, 3, 2, 1, Happy New Year! And they scream, Happy New Year. Um, I say, couples will kiss for good luck, and people will shake a bag of money for good luck with money in the New Year, and we enjoy fireworks. Okay, so then I chose, I think, like 10 or so countries, starting with Canada, because it's where I'm from. And um, I have a picture of Niagara Falls. And I wrote, at Niagara Falls, there's a beautiful light show. Um, there's an orchestra that plays music during the fireworks. And many people can enjoy the show. I'm not actually sure if there's an orchestra, but I know that there's, like, music or something, or live bands or whatever. But anyways, okay, America. Uh, most people around the world will watch New York's New Year's celebration at Times Square. At midnight on December, or on midnight of December 31st, a crystal ball will drop after the New Year countdown. countdown. Uh, Germany. People celebrate the New Year by pouring molten metal into water. The shape of the metal will show things about their future, so love, money, health, etc. UAE. Um, I talked about the Burj Khalifa, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it properly, but it's the world's tallest tower, and during New Year's they have a wicked fireworks display. Um, in Australia, people can enjoy beautiful fireworks and music at the Sydney Opera House. In Brazil, people believe that lentil, so I've got like the picture of the seeds, the lentil seeds, or grains, whatever they are, uh, will bring good luck. and. So they eat them, and people push a boat, boat full of flowers and jewels out to the ocean for a good new year. In the UK, people celebrate New Year's by the Big Ben, and I also read up on this. I'm not sure how true it is, but it's an interesting thing that I kept coming across in my mini soft research of New Year's celebrations around the world. But apparently, it's good luck to gift coal, salt, bread, and a bottle of whiskey. So I thought that was kind of neat. In France, people believe that feasting or eating a big meal will bring good luck for the new year. In Spain, at midnight, it is good luck to eat 12 grapes. You have to eat one grape every strike of the, the chime on the clock at midnight. So 12, 
chimes 12 grapes. In Denmark, people jump off a chair at midnight and say, Happy New Year! And they break dishes and leave those broken dishes outside their friend's home, which I thought was really interesting. In the Philippines, people believe that the circle will bring good luck, so they eat grapes and they hold coins. They also pray to the Virgin Mary for a good year. Um, specifically, I, I've, um, I was with a Filipino family one New Year's and they had like a huge uh, Virgin Mary shrine and, a, and everyone would go pray to her. So I, I thought that was interesting, so I kind of included that. In Japan, so I included Japan just to kind of wrap their minds back to home. Um, so people clean their house. They eat mochi and soba, and they pray at temples and shrines. And then finish. Okay, so that's that. Now, I would tell students to get in small groups, usually four people to one group. The class has A, B, C, D, E, F. So six groups of four students. So that's the one class I had today. And each group, so each group of four students would get one whiteboard and an eraser and a um, dry erase marker. So then I would start by getting each group to write their group letter. So for example, this is like group A. And then on my teacher whiteboard, I would have a list of A, B, C, D, all the way down, um, specifically to collect points, so, or to record points. Uh, so anyways, I'll keep this as if it's a student's whiteboard. So some of the questions, like I left my um, sheet at school of my questions, and I'm feeling a little bit brain dead right now, but some of the questions I had were, um, what is the country that eats 12 grapes at midnight? Or it could be, um, okay, for example, I'd say this question has two answers. So you write two answers, you can get two points. So the question would be, in Spain, people eat what fruit, or what fruit do people eat, and how many? So then the students would talk together and think together, and then um, I get a lot of uh, katakana, but the teacher tries to push for um, romaji. So I've got grapes, and then 12. So then I'd be like, okay, I'd count down from 10 to give all the groups time to catch up. And then I'd say, show me your answers. So all the groups put up their boards like this at the same time. And then um, I would look around the classroom and see who has the correct answer and give points accordingly. So other questions, I'm just trying to think. Other questions were like, what city in America, or no, not even, I'd be like, what city has a giant crystal ball come down at New Year, or at the, the final count of the New Year or something. Um, what else did I have? I had, uh, oh, what do they put in the boat when they push the boat out to the water in Brazil or wherever it was? And like, it's surprising. I had, I thought, fairly difficult questions and all the students totally remembered everything and their answers were totally correct and it was like incredible. It worked out really, really, really well, which was very, very nice. Um, but anyways, okay, so yeah, after, after a few questions, I think I always have 10. Your scoreboard's probably gonna, pretend that's A to E, your scoreboard's probably gonna have like something like this. So then you can be like, okay, so the winner is group C. Good job. Good job, everyone. Group C, you can clap or whatever. Um, so that's like a super thin down example. Okay, so that was my part of the class, the lesson. And then the second half is um, maybe not even like a little under half the class was the grammar sentences. So this was interesting. We actually played the kar karuta game. So that's where you have little cards that have pictures of something. You put them amongst a group. We use group of four and we put the cards amongst them on the table. And then you had to say a hint and then the students would look for the answer and then 
the first one to grab it gets to keep that card and that's a point for them. So the some examples of the cards were umbrella, soccer, chocolate, pyramid, stamp, the earth, sumo, ice cream, school, go, milk, pizza, library, china, thumbs up, stuff like that. And then the question sentences are, okay, so I would have uh, this paper and I'd be walking around the room because it felt really weird just being at the very front and all the students are like at the back and I'm like, no, nah, I want to be with you guys. So the first thing I asked was, okay, so basically reading this off, this is the thing which we use on a rainy day. And uh, the answer would be umbrella. Um, this is the sport which is played by 22 people. The answer would be chocolate, or sorry, uh, soccer. <laughs> The food which the girls give the boys on St. Valentine's Day is chocolate. So as soon as I read the question, I don't say the answer, the kids grab the the card and then I, I look around to see that no one's like jerking for a card and then I'd be like, okay, so the answer is nya 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 and I just like say the answer and then yeah, students can keep the card. So that's the other half of the lesson and I'm not quite sure if my phone camera can like focus on this but basically these are the questions um, I'll read out a, a few of them so this is the drink which is given by a cow it would be milk um, this is the building which was built by Ashikaga Yoshimitsu in Kyoto which is King Kakujin the golden pavilion um, this is the place uh, to which people go when we are sick. Uh, these are written by the, the teacher. And the answer to that one is hospital. Uh, this is the animal which lives in Australia, koala. This is the animal which gives us milk, cow. This is the animal with a long neck, giraffe. This is the sport we can enjoy in winter, skiing. Um, this is a traditional sport which is still popular in Japan, sumo. This is the planet which we are living on, earth. Um, so yeah, th those are examples of, um, I guess, the second half of the class. So anyways, yeah, that was the class. So as soon as the students had all the cards, I would say, okay, count your cards. Let's see who's the winner. And then I raised my hand and I say, okay, raise your hand if you're the winner. Winner, winner. And then one person raises their hand and I say, okay, second place. Second winner, yeah! Third winner, yeah! Fourth winner, yeah! Just like super hyper happy. And then um, after that, I would get the students to bring the cards to the front. And by that time, we had to say our, our goodbyes and class was over. So anyways, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you next time. Bye!